So we're talking about pimple tonight, yes? So let's see. Don't know if uh, Peter is ready for people to talk about it, but he talked about it, so I guess we're going to follow suit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, Temple. So here's the, put this in the chat for everyone. Has anyone heard? He's done a couple of podcasts, um, like inter, like a uh, guesting on podcasts, um, and then he I, there's a video that he put out. I think he links to it from this page, yeah, here, which is a pretty good overview. And uh, has anyone seen any of that or listened to the podcast? No, I haven't. Um, he does a, he does a good job of describing. Like he's got a, a lot, there's a lot of thought put into his libraries, which I appreciate. I was just using Nippy this morning um, for something new. So, so let's see. Temple, a Temple is a lightweight encryption framework that wraps the JVM's native crypto facilities to provide a particularly high level closure API for easily protecting your users' data. More than any other collection, Temple offers a coherent and opinionated API for secure data management that is focused on helping you with the toughest parts of getting of using encryption in practice. It's tiny API and focus on smart keychains helps shield you from unnecessary and error-prone complexity, greatly simplifying the most common data security needs. Hey, do you mind uh, looking into the toughest parts there? Yeah. I'd like to like to see. Working with encryption can be tough. <laughs> Some of the most stressful and error prone challenges include understanding what keys you'll need, understanding how the various algorithms and schemes fit together. Yeah, that's one thing that I've always had a hard time with is like it's dizzying and it's all and it's combinatorial too. It's like it's like yeah everything and then and then there's key size you know and it's like so there's 30 of them but you know there's only three variations that just multiplied you know or five variations or whatever maintaining best practices over time auto migrating yeah. from compromised algorithms yeah key oh yeah key rotation key management key rotation password resets admin backups yeah. many of these can be tough to get right needing non-trivial understanding, experience, and effort. And getting even one thing wrong can mean compromised or completely inaccessible data. Yeah, that's true. Apple was designed to keep help with each of these, letting you focus on your application. It's not the rats, not on the rat's nest of becoming a security expert. <laughs> I guess we can just go through the getting started then, yeah? Let's see. Disclaimer. While it has been tested, nature of the problem domain inevitably means some bugs or misuse can be especially harmful and easy to make. Be very careful evaluating Temple and or other cryptographic libraries for use, especially new libraries like Temple. There is a back on the um I just switched back to the readme real quick and there is a why temple section back there that's pretty good statements on the rationale. Oh, okay. So it's an easy to use high level API focus on common tasks like logins, encryption signing. Yeah. I think you said that before. It's a particularly high level closure API. Uh. Reasonable defaults, future-proof data formats with auto-updated algorithms and work factors over time. Interesting. Support for symmetric, asymmetric, and end-to-end -end encryption.
automatic S crypt and P PVK DF to support password key stretching. I've not done much key stretching um, as I have not logged, I have not created the user login system in a while, but I do remember that was gaining popularity some years ago, like eight, eight years ago, six years ago. Simple key management API, password resets, key rotations, extensive beginner oriented documentation. That's yes. That's nice. That uh, that's a good call out here, right? That like the documentation itself is a feature. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the beginner. It's it's like you know this this library is playing to the crowd. You don't want to become a security expert, and the documentation is there for you as well as the the library itself. Yeah, yeah. I was um, speaking to the caliber of libraries that come from him from Peter. Um, he, I was, I was just looking at Nippy earlier today and I was on version 3.2 and there's version 3.3. And I remember clicking on the change log in the Nippy, uh, source code, like the net change log file. And I, I, because I've looked at it before, I knew there would be a volume of information, a huge amount of information about the changes that in each version. And it's like what I've come to expect from him, like just the, like, like very detailed and in a good way, not, not, not in a bad way, but just like, there's, there's definitely, he, he puts a lot of effort in, which is appreciated because a lot of libraries, um, some that I make too, um, are light or lighter, <laughs> lighter on the documentation. Comprehensive test suite with over 60,000 unit tests. That's incredible. Hopefully some of those are generated. <laughs> Note that Temple is not intended for interop with other cryptographic tools. Interesting. Can I decrypt Temple data with other tools? No, it is intentionally not designed for interop with other general purpose cryptographic tools or portability between platforms and languages. Temple presumes that you will do both the encryption and decryption using Temple with closure on the JVM. Huh. Mm -hmm. Limitation is a conscious cho choice to enable unique benefits. For example, Temple's encrypted payloads contain information about the encryption algorithms and parameters used. This enables the automatic selection of keys in a keychain enables automatic and backward compatible algorithm and parameter upgrades over time. Nice. So I'm guessing the encrypted payload has, um, it's got metadata. That's not just the encryption, not just the data. So by making it only closure on the JVM, it's he's able to make it uh, easier <laughs> uh, in the simple versus easy uh, axes, um, easier for use, but it is not interoperable with other things. So it's good for some use cases and not good for others. It's interesting. Yeah, that's a good call out, Nate. I mean, like if you're working in an ecosystem with other applications, you know, that may be written in other languages, then um, that may be something to consider mm -hmm. whether use, using Temple or not. It is kind of a little nice to have something that's just for us, mm -hmm. you know, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like, you know, we... So many times we want to be, you know, egalitarian and work with anybody, but sometimes it's nice to have the best stuff for our language. 
All right. I put the uh, this code over here. I wanted to play with it, so here you go. My keychain. And this is what the keychain looks like. Ooh. Cool. It looks like it's got a symmetric key. There's three keys, one, two, and three. Yeah, so asking for a friend here on a key chain, uh, what, maybe we'll get into it later in the documentation, but are these keys related to one another? I don't know. Oh, it's probably for different, like different default selection for different use cases. Yeah. Or I say three, two, two. So each one has a uh, pub private uh, pair. So there's a symmetric one, and then there's an RSA 3072 and a, D, D, a DH. Ah, uh, okay. Here we go. Um. And these these are public private keys. So this is like the key ring that you have, like with the keys to to unlock stuff. It, it's like private. <clears throat> okay, come on. Well, that's nice. the The information that we're getting, you know, not just the uh, the key type and the algorithm, but an attribute asymmetric, which is true or false. So we, we can like inspect this data structure and get more, and we don't have to know um, ourselves. It's already nice. Just feel secure with all those numbers. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, so use our keychain to encrypt some data. Encrypt with symmetric key and keychain. Hundred and one carat hundred and one bytes. So this is encrypted. Uh what does nippy freeze do? Nippy freeze returns a byte array of frozen frozen. Have you used Nippy before? I've not used no, I haven't. Oh. Um, sorry. Uh, so Nippy is a serialization library. So it takes any closure data structure and makes it into a byte array. Um, it's a pretty, it's a pretty good system for, um, and also is compressed and optionally encrypted too. It's got its own encryption system. Um, and so it's good for, um, I've used it for transmit, transmitting data. Uh, closure data like you can you can serialize a lot of closure data to like using um oh what's the one transit um that'll do a pretty good job but nippy will do like it'll serialize all kinds of different objects and stuff um and uh yeah so that's what nippy does and this is just encrypting because I think encrypting, you just you have to encrypt the byte array. You don't, you can't encrypt anything else. So this is just freezing that. Okay. Cool. So then we this is thawing it. Get back the original unencrypted data. Which means that we can probably like encrypt the map 
then just get a map back. Uh, I don't know if we saw it. There you go. Cool. It's safe to store keychains, encrypted keychains. My encrypted keychain. Oh, it's, this encrypts the keychain as a. Okay, so now this is a blob that's encrypted. Can with we the password? Yeah, can we look at the doc for encrypted keychain? Is that so? Um, it, I'm guessing it takes a map and, and needs password, right? Uh, give it a keychain and a password or symmetric key. Returns a byte that includes. Cool. It includes the entire keychain, mm -hmm. optional other content, <laughs> additional bytes that would should be encrypted and included. Interesting. Uh. But it includes unencrypted any public keys in the keychain. Oh, okay. Optional AAD. What's AAD? I don't know. Uh, is this a... AAD help? Additional authentication. Authenticated data. Arbitrary byte data. That may be provided in many of Temple's functions. Provided data AAD data will be embedded unencrypted with the APIs with the with the output bytes. Okay. Oh, additional additional authentication. Like it's like um signatures. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like um hashes or you know <laughs> like the the checksum you know uh yeah that that doesn't necessarily have to be encrypted so no need to yeah routing information description of cool. the descript encrypted content so this is like the metadata mm -hmm. okay yeah that's nice. well we'll have to try playing with that. Um, envelope data necessary for decryption, specifying the algorithms. Okay, so that stuff's unencrypted. Obviously, it has to be unencrypted so that you can tell <laughs> like, <laughs> how to decrypt it. All right, decrypt cool. With, yeah, I was, I was, uh, it, it's a password, right? So I just wanted to see the password is expected, but it's cool that we can use a password or a key, a private key. Yeah. My encrypted keychain. What was this? It said retrieve with public data. Public data mm -hmm. with my encrypted keychain. Uh -huh. Oh, so this is the public data. Cool. And it's got public, it's, so it's got the two public chains, the two public key chains, or two public keys. Keys, keys from the <laughs> chain, yeah. <laughs> what was the format of this other stuff? Byte arrays. So like if we wanted to put this in uh, encrypted nippy, please, 
Whoa. Yep. Look at the public data. There it is. Hmm. So then if we have BA with the BA, I will need it. Nice. I wonder if it just like, <laughs> like it's just concatenated at the end or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, anyway. All right, so then we get back the original unencrypted keychain by calling decrypt keychain. Which has, now it has the secret. False and secret true. All There you go. That's the quick example. Anything else you, anyone wants to try with that? See what the the decrypt keychain takes. Oh. Ooh, backup key. Ooh, Temple has a fixed scope and is fully complete. I'm happy with its design and implementation. I believe it meets all its objectives in its current form. I'm not anticipating any significant changes. Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Still. <laughs> <laughs> Every programmer. Yeah, but it just in case. I plan to approach Temple's official stable release as a phased rollout to allow time to feedback before locking things down. Okay, we're getting close to production. We'll be final. We will consider done. The library is expected to to be to need see only minimal maintenance from that point. Wow. Security vulnerabilities. There's a no. I'll click here for security advisories. None so far. That's always a relief. Very cool. Well, shall we see what the uh, getting started has? Let's see. We already have it running. Quick intro. Temple is basically a toolkit to help encrypt and decrypt data in a variety of situations. 
Encryption is always requires an encryption key. Decryption always requires the related decryption key. There are two kinds of encryption to be aware of. Symmetric, easy to understand because it's like using a password. The same secret symmetric key will be used both encryption and decryption. The most common symmetric algorithm is AES. I wonder what this one is. Symmetric, uh, doesn't say AES, it just says symmetric. Keyword symmetric. Mm -hmm. Asymmetric. Public key is more complex, but also supports a wider range of situations. Symmetric, asymmetric encryption uses key pairs. A key pair consists of two different but related keys, hence the term asymmetric. One secret private key and one related public key that is generally safe to share. Some common uh, some asymmetric algorithms are RSA and Diffie Hellman. Those ones are easy to spot. In many cases, asymmetric schemes, encryption schemes will also use asymmetric encryption. These hybrid schemes will generally use asymmetric techniques to exchange, to safely exchange symmetric key between the parties for the communication that can then be done via, asymmet via symmetric encryption, which is usually simpler and faster. Yeah. I would say from what, from what I understand, almost all broadly used encryption schemes like SSH or you know, HTTPS in your web browser, do this. Like, <laughs> yeah, the hybrid scheme. The hybrid scheme where they negotiate a symmetric key and then use that. That is my understanding. I am not a security researcher, though, so I'm definitely prepared to be wrong. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we already read through the challenges. Keychains, as mentioned in the quick intro, key encryption means keys. You need various kinds of keys to interact with Temple's API. Instead of bogging you down with the details, Temple uses a concept called keychains. Now, I guess to physical keychains, these are closure objects that hold zero or more keys of various types for various purposes. They can be evaluated for basic info. They can be deref for detailed info. Really? Ref my keychain. Pretty much the same as before. Can be tested for equality, can be easily and securely de and serialized and deserialized. Include a built in API for easy key management, adding, removing, naming, prioritization, etc. Oh, cool. Let's create a new keychain for our user, Alice. Ah, Alice. Let's go. Def once Alice keychain. Keychain for Alice. Created with the default options in star config. Nippy. Not nippy. Temple. Okay. Okay. Oh, no backup keys. Which key pairs to use? Oh, which asymmetric ones? And which symmetric keys? Random. <clears throat> Hash algorithm. Symmetric cipher algorithm. Interesting. Embedded HMAC. 100 milliseconds of work factor. 
this is to slow down the brute forcing. I remember that from PD, P, PBKDF stuff. If you're not familiar with all of these keys and what they mean in the, the real security space, this is why we're looking at Temple. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yes. These are the very these are the relatively few knobs that we have to tweak. And yes, these are these are these are few knobs. <laughs> all right. So we get ourselves the keychain created with the default options in config. Temple keychain. Ooh. Okay. You valid keychain to get some basic info about it. Okay. All right, that's what we have before. Deref it to get my 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 um my editor must be doing deref because I get the detailed view only. I wonder if you do like stir to get the Yeah, there you go. So two, one symmetrical, two private, and two public. Secret true. Be careful. Notice it contains one 256-bit symmetric key, a three thirty 3072 RSA key, and a 3272 Diffie Hellman key. Yes, we see that. Yeah, the secret true is nice, right? Because this is like a warning. Should you treat it as secret? Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's got a it's got a label on the top, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hazardous materials inside. <clears throat> It's not important to understand yet what any of this means. These are reasonable defaults that'll work well together to support the entire temple API. Each key pair was randomly and securely generated, which we call temple keychain, based on the options in temple config. This is a very important var. Its default value should be reasonable for most users, but it'd be worth at least familiarizing yourself with what's in there. It's doc string. Ah, that would be a good thing to look at. Oh, wow. Would be a good thing. Uh, includes extensive documentation, I mean. When encrypting a backup key, or backup key, when encrypting, encrypt, it, encrypt data so that decryption will be possible with either the primary key password or this optional secondary backup keychain. Interesting. So, like, uh, like an admin key or like a like a super key. Mm -hmm. hmm. All right. For now, just note, oh, yeah. content can, can be updated, keys can be removed or added, and key priorities can be adjusted. But for many simple uses, you won't need any of that under normal circumstances. For now, just note that this key chain contains secret data. If we want to store the chain, we should first encrypt it. Oh, I guess I can just click this button. Always retrieve Alice's public keys even without a password. That's what were we doing before with public data?
what we can do. Yeah, the string version has is there you go, secret false. Just like our uh, secret true before. And if we have our password, we can get back everything. Okay. There it is. Quality works as you expect. Okay, we saw it before. Temples AVI is easy, small, easy to use, easy to browse, and has extensive beginner docu oriented doc strings. Includes keychain basics, keychain encrypt and decrypt. You'll usually have one keychain per user, create and encrypt it on sign up, and then decrypt it on login and retain while the user remains logged in. Deref it to see its contents. Default options for returning keychain that includes all the keys necessary to fully support Temple's entire API. Okay. Mm -hmm. Data protection. Sorry. Anyone have any? Sorry, I'll, I'll pause. <laughs> Okay. Uh, encrypt with password, decrypt with password, encrypt with symmetric key, decrypt, encrypt with one and two key pairs, sign and signed. Okay, so this is all about encrypting and decrypting data, either with symmetric or let's say like full encrypt. Metric key. Reporting utils, public data to return the unencrypted data. Keychain add symmetric key. Okay, so this is modifying a keychain and adding an asymmetric key and removing and updating priority. Wonder what that is used for. Like what the use case is. Yeah, it's interesting that, you know, we're not, it doesn't look like we're choosing the keys directly, right? We're using a key chain for these mm -hmm. operations, at least so far from, from what it says, that's what it looks like. So it seems like we can change the priority of the keys that would be used for certain operations, right? So we could have multiple um, asymmetric keys and that may help select which one is used. I'm guessing we can probably, oh, there there's probably ways to choose which one we want. We, we can probably use operations for key specific keys, but mm -hmm. when using the keychain, I'm guessing that priority would be used. Yeah. I didn't see this before, but in here there's priority for each key, mm -hmm. zero, one, and two. Yeah, I also think that you know there is a diff uh, function encrypt. Is there a single encrypt? I like you always select encrypt with uh, asymmetric or symmetric. Who is that again? Like I'm just. Wondering if like the priority stays only for uh, asymmetric and symmetric, or like I can set uh, that my priority is to encrypt asymmetric all the time, or something like that. It's probably going to select that that aspect like symmetric versus asymmetric based on the operation that you're using. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But as far as which key gets used. I'm guessing like when we go to do perform an encryption, we'll probably uh, the priority comes into play, but the metadata would be written, right? So then when we do a decryption, it probably will use the metadata to find the particular key in a keychain. Probably. Just guessing here, you know, I, just, I don't know. Hopefully we'll find out. Yeah. Priority values could be any integer when multiple keys in a keychain are appropriate for a task. The key with the highest priority will be selected. 
like higher as in <laughs> the higher the, the 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 higher number, the greater than number. <laughs> you know, priority number one, right? That's the one. That's the that's the highest priority, right? Gotta love it. No, no, like one and two is like uh, if you do one, then only uh, recipient can decrypt. And if tools and boss can decrypt a sender or recipient. Uh, can we start simple? Can we do an encrypt with password? And then maybe uh... so encrypt with a password here, we can use anything, right? We're probably not even going to use the 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 content and the password. Content takes a string. Uh, string. Password be stretched using an appropriate. Interesting. <laughs> Oh, and you can also have a backup key. Okay. So we're essentially taking a simple password that we put in like my password, and then this yeah. operation makes it a more complex thing, right? Mm -hmm. So that was encrypt with password and encrypt with symmetric key. Takes the key, takes the content and the key, the key chain, I mean, and uses the symmetric cipher to encrypt the given content and return encrypt the content. Oh, super cool. Well, the next wiki section is examples with lots of use cases. It's nice. Let's see. Encryption. Allows you to encrypt their data so that you don't they only they can view and modify it. Symmetric encryption with a password. Which this would be just a little bit wider. <laughs> True. Let's see here. So oh, I put them out of order. There you go. That's the encrypted one. That's the decrypted one. And this is, are they the same? Okay, so that works as, as, we, as we expected. Just you encrypt with the password, decrypt. So will it throw an error if we use the wrong password? Oh, that's a good idea. Good, good test. Unexpected HMAC, bad encryption key, or corrupt data. Fail to decrypt temple data with password. Yeah, it's one of those things like you don't know if it was, if the data is corrupt or if it's just bad bad uh, key. Yep. 
Metric encryption with a keychain. So here's Alice's secret keychain. Make another one. Bob. And let's try to use Bob. First, let's use Alice's. Now we use Bob. Eh, bad encryption key or bad corrupt data. One identified key tried. So it tried. It tried the. Uh, that the one symmetric key. So if we add the second one, it will try two keys. Uh, let me see. You mean with the... Uh... Like just if you throw a second key in a Bob's keychain, like add symmetric key or something. Add symmetric key. And this would be temple add symmetric add. Oh, keychain add. What does that take? Oh, keychain yeah. X key. Produces a new keychain that contains the given symmetric key. X key may be random. Byte of length or key sim key sim map. The keys will be get by default get top priority over override with the priority option. So I say keychain, which would be Bob keychain, and then random. So Bob two keys, symmetric, there's an RSA, there's an RSA, key of element, there you go. Okay. I'm guessing highest priority is the one with the highest number, not the, not the human concept of priority. So then what were you saying? We should try decry decrypting with Bob? Up to like I just wonder if it will be doing it twice now. So it's like this. Now oh, no. tried one still tries one. Yeah. Interesting. Is there a way to say which key to use and the encrypt? In encrypt or decrypt? 
like in an end crypt, we can probably select the key. And then we can test if TCM, like if it really writes the metadata or we need to say what key to use. I don't see a way of look specifying like it. the key. Yeah. Unless we specifically select and send a key to it. I just manually take a key out of the keychain. I wonder how you, how you would do that. Well, there must be some get key, right? It's a map or something. There's no get the key out. I think I think part of the value prop is that it's like the keychain is rather opaque, and you just use it, and it'll it it decides for you. Yeah. But then, like, if for example, want to have for whatever reason two different keys for the user, how do you select which one? Like probably the priority. Probably. Yeah, just priority. But can you just get a key from the keychain? Just the ref it and get it by name or number? Let me try. I probably need to draft it first. Okay. Okay, so that's just that's just the symmetric key. Well, there's this KCM you see over there. So this is probably what we can pass into the system. What was that again? So they have like the map key key symbol, KCM. Uh -huh. So this is what we can probably pass for encryption. ESIM? Yeah. So if we say... Sim. Right. I use that to encrypt it. True. So it looks like you can use that instead of the keychain. If you want to manually get, you manually yeah. pull one of the keys off and you're just like, do you really use this one? So yeah, possible. <laughs> I wonder if you can alias them as well. Like name it, not one, two, three, four, zero. He did say there was a way of naming it. Yeah. Oh, well, probably somewhere. Probably when you add a key to keychain. Built in, put in API for naming. Yeah. yeah. There you go. So add so a key say... probably has a name argument or something. Key ID. Yeah, probably key ID is what it is. Okay, so let's do that. Let's say. Didn't seem to add it. Can be. We did add it the key. 
but it didn't can be like... def once be the issue because can you rename it? It definitely is a different key. Is it just uh yeah? But it's still should we put pass M up ID. as a as a last argument? Probably it's a map, not the cover arcs. I wonder if it should be a I think I'm assuming there is a way that that this can be done because I saw a comment somewhere about security right and like that you may need to take extra care if you've used a custom key naming scheme and I'm not yeah. finding that now but I would you know it just seems like uh, he, was, he was hinting at a warning like hey don't put secrets into that key name itself <laughs> <laughs> don't share um, because it will be put on the public data right hmm let's see and the interesting fact that new keys will be by default top priority so hmm. I guess the higher number in priority, the better. There's no priority or keychain add in the examples. Oh, what are they going to do? Encryption. Probably look in tests or like key AD argument. We can do that. It looks like it's a. It looks like we're doing everything map. right. Well, but I it's a, I did a. Try that. It's only. Oh, that was only it. strings are allowed. Yeah, that'd be a string. What was the priority one? There's a new key chain with the identified keys priority updated to be update if an old priority. Oh, interesting. Priority values can be any integer, positive or negative. Multiple keys in a keychain are appropriate. The key with the highest priority will be selected. So if we say, simple keychain update priority, Bob two keys, key ID is, yep. And we're going to say, There you go, meet up to now negative one.
So priority is accepting function. That's it. So update priority accepts function. Yeah. So the and function you get... will update you. You yeah, that's past the old priority, so you can do. Oh, okay, it. guys. Mm -hmm. Why just put constantly to like? I want to set mm -hmm. it to this. All right, so we should do some async asymmetrical stuff. Oops. Send secret message to user. Allow users to submit a bug report, ensuring it's viewable only by the intended recipient. All right, let's look at this. Alice has got a keychain. And then we say what's a public keychain or public data from the encrypted. So we encrypt the keychain and get the public data. And we freeze a byte array of secret data. We encrypt one key pair, Alice's public keychain. And then decrypt one. So this is made so that she can read information that Oh, I see. So pretend Alice is the, the engineering department and we're trying to encrypt this but only that she can see it. Uh -huh. Yeah. What's Alice? public keychain look like. Okay. So if you want to encrypt something for Alice, you got to somehow get this thing. I assume you can let the thaw or freeze it. Uh oh. Can't freeze the delay. Okay, so it's unfreezable. How am I supposed to get Alice's keychain to someone else? Um, yeah, it's it's interesting. Like that, I I I kind of cheated. I looked at the login right. So like the we create these keychains, and they've got a secret part, and you you like store the encrypted keychain. But can we we can get the public info from that encrypted keychain? Yes. Uh, and just get, we only get the public parts from that, right? Yeah. So that's how we would get it. We would take the, un we would take the encrypted keychain blob and get the public parts out of it. Or go out of band and we share it in some other way, right? But with that encrypted keychain, we can always get the public. Right. So say you are the one who wants to get, send a bug report. Hopefully, I wouldn't have to give you the even encrypted private keychain. I wouldn't even want to give you that. I would only want to give you the public. Well, you can to publish yeah. public somewhere. But how? Right. Like, like this is what the public, this is what the public keychain looks like, and yeah. I can't, I can't uh, freeze it. Yeah. So what we how would am I do... supposed to serialize it? You know, is it um. It might help us to go look at the login use case um, because it, it kind of like informs on on how we think about the keychain. So this would be like two different users of the same system. And so that's why, that's why, that's how you can get the public key of someone else is because you're both users on the same system. It's not yeah. intended as like a, you have your running process on your machine and I run my running process on my machine. This is more like 
we're both using the same SAS. Right. Yeah, that's gotcha. right. Yep. Yep. That's, that solves the problem. There's no, there's no serialization needed then. Yeah. And you know, like in systems that I've used before, we typically have, we're doing a, um, kind of not an all in one system like this. So there's not really a keychain on the user, but there is the encrypted password, the hashed password, right? For the user to log in. And so mm -hmm. the user provides some password and then we would hash that and see if it matches, you know, the hashed value that's in the database. Whereas here we're building a login system by creating a keychain for a user that's created with their password. Right. Mm -hmm. And then instead of storing that direct hash of the password, we store the keychain. And therefore, if the user can unlock their keychain with the password, we can log them in. But instead of just getting binary or true or false, we actually they they're unlocking the keychain and getting keys. Something that's valuable. So, so this is like even more trickier. So I think it was talking about creating uh encrypted data for users that only a user can read. Uh -huh. so I guess we have a keychain and we have access to decrypt keychain with uh, a get public data as an admin user, yeah, which we use for encrypting data, but only user can actually read the data. Like we as an engineers cannot get that data. Well, once we encrypt the keychain, yeah, that's, that's true. Once we encrypt the keychain though, we can store that into the database. But then we could really on any anyone's record, we could obtain that encrypted blob and get the public parts of it, right? So if I wanted to send a message to Nate, we could go to Nate's user record and get his encrypted keychain, get the public part of it, and then I could use that or the system could pass me that public part and create a message to to Nate signing with this public or encrypting with this public key. But it's it's interesting. <laughs> mm -hmm. Super powerful for you know having the system managing stuff where user to user secrets are valuable, you know, like encrypted chat rooms or something like that. If I like using that in, the, in a way to send a direct message, you know, from user to user that's in, encrypted. Yes, how, although, however, it's not end to end encrypted as in like encrypted in the browser to the server than the other browser, like it's, you're using other like H, like SSL to get it to the server, and it's encrypted between the users on the server, but not. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like you imagine like some kind of medical data where you know you like engineers shouldn't see it like under any circumstances. Mm -hmm. So this is how you design something like that. Uh huh. Yeah, that's true. I mean, this does say closure only, right? So without closure script support. If we had closure script support, it could be done in the browser and get end to end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think it's like a big problem. Oh, no, we need to decrypt it to send it over to browser some way. All right. Well, we're almost to eight o'clock. Um... Should we take a pause and pick up the rest of the uh, user account stuff later or the next meetup? Do you think there's enough left? Yeah, I'm, I would be interested to keep going and, and especially around like password rotation and how does the rotation work? Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I think, I think there's, there's still definitely plenty to talk to talk about still. Yeah, I agree. But I feel like we're kind of at a at a at a pausing point, so we should break it off. Hmm. Lest we go till tomorrow. Tyson's almost already tomorrow. <laughs> already what? You're yeah. almost at tomorrow. Almost. You're farther ahead of us. <laughs> Living in the future. 
oh, a teaser, teaser, send a secret message between two users. This is an example. There's a note in here that says, this is an example of end-to-end -end encryption. So yeah. we can dig into that next time. Yeah, that sounds good. Cool. Well, that's fun. It's very exciting. I like I like this kind of like this idea about a, an API, this level of an API, like where it's it's making a lot of obviously really intentional decisions and um and applying some algorithms like how it'll automatically pick which key to, which key to use, you know. Like that's something that was added and not necessary for to use encryption, but necessary to use this library because it's like no, I'm trying to help you along the way. So I like that idea. Yep. Especially for security where it matters. Mm -hmm. And someone that's poured over yeah. all the options. Cool. All right, then. Will we call it a day then? Yep. Thank you. And good yeah, for thanks. driving. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Happy to do it. Always fun to see everyone. Have a good month.